This past Christmas, I told my girlfriend for months in advance, months. I said, baby, all I want from you this year is an Xbox. <laughs> That's it. Beginning and end of list to Xbox. <laughs> you know what she got me? A homemade frame with a picture of us. <laughs> From our first date together. Which was fine. <laughs> because I got her an Xbox. I was a pretty gay kid, uh, and it was never more apparent to me or my family than Christmas 1994. I wanted what every little boy in the nation wanted for Christmas that year. Say it with me. The Crimp and Curl Pony by the Cabbage Patch Company. Okay. Um, again, left hanging. Uh, whatever. The Crimp and Curl Pony. I wanted it. My mom was super cool. She got it for me. I opened it up on Christmas morning. I just started crimping and curling right away. You know, couldn't resist. My dad, less enthused. Uh, he looked at my mom and he was like, Janet, what the fuck? <laughs> like, this is a girl's toy. This is a toy for little girls. Why would you get him this? And my mom looked at my dad in his eyes and said, well, Ken, my brother Bob, he used to get baby dolls for Christmas, and now he's a pediatrician. So. <laughs> Connect the dots. And, I was, and my dad was just like, what the fuck do you think he's going to be, a fucking horsehair stylist? Like, what's the end game here, Janet? And, you know, I remember my dad saying that, you know, and I was just six years old, and I, rem I remember thinking, is that a profession? Is that something that I can do? Like, does it require a college degree? Like, how can I make that happen? Dad, don't leave me hanging. I'm in my mid-20s. I don't like people my age. Like, they always put their faults on you, their weaknesses on you. Like I was shopping with my friend Nico for like two hours. I don't know why for that. For me, like shopping is just finding weird places to sit. That's all. I was in the rafters. They're like, I, we didn't even know we had seats up there. I was like, well, you do. And my phone's at 7%. Let's get out of here. <laughs> we're two hours into shopping. And she said to me, I wish you were gay so that you could help me shop. Yeah, it's like, why don't you just make a better wish? <laughs> yeah. yeah, just wish to be fashionable. I don't know. <laughs> if I wanted to be over there, I wouldn't wish that you were a horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would just wish to be over there. <laughs> creating this unnecessary gay middleman. If you love Christmas, you're gay. <laughs> Everyone's like, I wonder what it'd be like to be gay. It's not sucking dick, it's everything during Christmas. <laughs> Every goddamn thing you do. We're gonna put the star, the presents, you know, it's gay. <laughs> presents are gay. What's behind that pretty box? You know, it's, it's gay, it's all gay. The way I shop is different now because of technology. Like I used to go to stores and like compare prices and try things on and maybe go back and get something. Now here's what I do. I sit in my house, I'll smoke a little pot. I'll dream something up. Like I need a gold stapler. And then the next day someone throws it over the fence. I'm like, I was just kidding. You can get as specific as you want. Like, I want a cornflower blue kimono. And then it just comes, that is not a good way to shop. Black Friday, it's getting dark out there, Black Friday. You can't even go shopping the day after Thanksgiving no more. You can lose your life in the Best Buy. I, what, if I get squashed to death in the Best Buy on Black Friday, I'd be in heaven, I'd be so pissed at God, I'd be like, shit I done did. I gotta lose my life because somebody decided to slash prices on a 27-inch Zenith. We all drive up to Maine, uh, to Freeport, Maine, for the wedding, and Freeport is known for having a lot of outlet stores, and if you don't know what an outlet store is, it's the same 
as a regular store, but a dollar less, you guys. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, it's super exciting. So, so we have a day, a whole day before the wedding, and my friends are like, let's hit the outlets. Let's hit the outlets. Let's hit the outlets. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we'll hit the outlets. So we're walking around and we pass this one store and it is a store that I hate. I refuse to go into the store. I don't even like to say the name of the store, but for the sake of the story, for you guys, I will say the name of the store. It is a, uh, a Zales diamond outlet, you guys. A Zales. That's how they say in the ad. It's like right from here, all the way up. Zales. I feel like that is the sound Cindy McCain would make if she ever had sex, just like, Zales! And then like back into her freezer forever, for the rest of her life. So I'm like, I refuse to go into that store. And as we're walking by, I see that there's like a chalkboard like a little whiteboard on which some employee has written in like big loopy letters, you know, like daisies over the eyes so girls can read it. And it literally says, don't worry, ladies, your husband's called. They said it's okay to come in and buy something. And I'm just like, F you, Zales. And uh, it really, yeah, seriously, f you, Zales. And it really made me want to go in and buy the most expensive thing that they have and then just come back the next day with like a giant black eye and just be like, you lied, Zales! He didn't call! He wasn't okay with that! I'm grounded now! Somebody bought me a Snuggie as a joke gift. Ha, the joke's on you. I enjoy it. Yeah. Huh. I toss and turn at night, finally a blanket that's like, nuh-uh, I'm gonna keep you warm. It's like having a small child with polio keep you in a full Nelson. The perfect pressure. What upset me about the gift is that's all I received was one sage green Snuggie. When in fact, I know it comes with two Snuggies and two book lights. Those are $20 values. Where the hell is the rest of my gift? Yeah. You have until Christmas, or I'm coming to your house and ripping three quarters of your fat head off your wall. I think Kwanzaa was invented for black people because there was no way black parents wanted to let a white guy in a red suit take the credit for all their hard work. <laughs> my mom's an African woman. There was no fucking chance. She was not having a white guy taking the credit. She had, all our presents had her name on it. I bought 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 it. Just the pressure's on now for the Christmas gift, right? Are you guys dating a long time? <laughs> Three years. Three years. It's got to be good. The first year you can get away with like one thoughtful thing and like a butt plug with like a ha-ha. <laughs> but seriously, let's try it. Second year, you gotta spend a couple hundo. Third year? Fuck, I don't know. You live together? You don't even live in the same city? I just keep telling her you forgot it at home. You know, I was surprised this year at the Super Bowl that Santa didn't land. And that we just started Christmas again. I will tell you that you Christians have created a holiday that has become a beast that cannot be fed. <laughs> Every year, Christmas gets longer and longer and longer, and you don't care, do you? You just take more and more of the calendar for yourself. It's unbelievable. How long does it take you people to shop? <laughs> it's beyond belief. It's insane. When I was a kid, Halloween was Halloween, and Santa wasn't poking his ass into it. <laughs> the worst thing about Halloween is, of course, candy corn. It's unbelievable to me. Candy corn is the only candy in the history of America that's never been advertised. <laughs> and there's a reason. All of the candy corn that was ever made was made in 1911.
And so, since nobody eats that stuff, every year there's a ton of it left over. And the candy corn company sends the guys to the villages and they collect out of the dumpsters all the candy corn we've thrown away. They wash it, they wash it. I'll never forget the first time my mother gave me candy corn. She said, here, Louis, this is candy corn. It's corn that tastes like candy. This tastes like crap. And every year since then, Halloween has returned and I, like an Alzheimer's patient, find myself in the room, and the room has a, a table in it, and on the table, there's a bowl of candy corn. And I look at it, as I've never seen it before. <laughs> candy corn, I think. Corn that tastes like candy. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Thanksgiving used to be Thanksgiving and it was its own holiday, not Christmas part one. <laughs> when I was a kid, you ate and you drank and you passed out and nobody woke you up and said, let's go shopping. <laughs> but Christmas has gotten out of control. But when I was a kid, I wanted to celebrate it. But I couldn't because I'm Jewish. <laughs> but when you compare Christmas to Hanukkah, there's no comparison. Christmas is great, Hanukkah sucks! <laughs> How do we celebrate Hanukkah? We celebrate it with candles. Little tiny pissant candles. <laughs> you Christians, on Christmas, Santa comes and he brings a ton of stuff. It's unbelievable. It's extraordinary, I go next door to see my best Christian pals, I'll never forget it. And the whole house is filled with boxes. It's like a warehouse. And out back, there's six ponies, six! <laughs> we were gonna buy Princess One, but we loved all of them. Ha <laughs> ha, Merry Christmas! <laughs> People believe that Hanukkah is uh, uh, celebrated for eight days. And that's a liar, liar, pants on fire situation. <laughs> Most Jewish families don't make it past the fourth day. It doesn't happen. Come on, aren't we gonna light the lights? Uh, no, enough's enough. <laughs> First night you get socks, second night an eraser, a notebook. It's a back to school holiday. 